It's been around about a year since I got my hands on the Fuji 90mm f2 Prime and in this video I want to share with you my thoughts on having lived and used this lens as my primary telephoto lens for all my travel and street photography. As always with these gear videos it's worth mentioning that I am in no way affiliated with Fujifilm nor do I have any interest in selling their gear. I paid for this myself with my own money at full retail price and any opinions that I share are completely my own. As a matter of fact, I would say that for most people, this lens is overkill. A 55 to 200 that they make will be a much better use of your money compared to going for something more premium like this. However, if you're like me and you love telephoto lenses, you love shooting with telephoto lenses, then this lens is definitely a good one. Finally, please keep in mind that I'm a photographer and not a tech enthusiast. Therefore, I will not be zooming in to 800% of a brick wall and talking about edge sharpness under a microscope. If you want those kinds of videos, I'm sure there are plenty of other people who do that. Instead, I'll be talking about what it's like to live with this lens and actually use it for real world photography. Let's start with why did I actually buy this lens because context is important. I love telephoto lenses. I have a 50 to 140 f2.8 that I've had for nearly five over five years now but because I travel more and more frequently at the moment and most of my travel is backpack style travel around cities the 50 to 140 was just a bit too big and a bit too heavy not to mention that when you're shooting in an urban environment with a big telephoto zoom like that you do stick out quite a fair bit so I wanted a telephoto lens that was half the size half the weight yet maintained that quality and even though there are other zooms on offer the 90mm f2 gave me that quality gave me the low light performance in a package that's half the size and half the weight and coupled with an xh2 or an xd5 or any of the 40 megapixel sensor fujis you can crop in a little bit further as a matter of fact the photo you're seeing now is uncropped and the photo you're seeing now is, has been cropped quite a fair bit and the quality is still exactly the same. So on a 40 megapixel camera, I actually have quite a fair bit of range and because this lens is very sharp, as I'll get into in a bit, the quality maintains when you do crop in. Now, why this focal length in particular? Well, when I'm traveling, be it in a city or somewhere in nature, I'm typically going for three major focal lengths. I'm going for a wide angle to establish the scene, I'm going for something down the middle around a 50 mil that can showcase a subject or a point of interest within the scene. And then I want a telephoto lens that can pick out interesting compositions within a grander scene and focus on the details. Now, I also have a 50 mil F2 prime. However, that sometimes doesn't quite cut it in terms of reach. Whereas the 90, I feel is the Kind of sweet spot in terms of getting that extra reach so if you're hiking if you're somewhere in nature you can crop into anything that's of interest with this lens now what was that there's a big truck outside anyway but when you're in a city you can use this lens to crop in and to create that kind of telephoto effect especially if you have long narrow streets and that can look quite cool um, in comparison to having everything just shot wide angle. Now this is definitely a taste thing. There are people who hate the telephoto look because within a street photography context a telephoto look can come across as a bit cold, a bit detached. However I personally like it because it makes the viewer feel like they are a fly on the wall and observing. And finally in terms of getting intimate details of the scene this lens is fantastic for that. And with the example earlier in the video where the guy was firing the cannon, I mean, you physically couldn't get any closer to the action. And if I didn't have the 90, I wouldn't have got that shot. So for me, from a travel and a, yeah, let's, let's say a travel perspective, this lens is, or this focal length, sorry, is invaluable. Now let's talk about build quality and my experience here is a little limited simply because I've never shot in a complete downpour. I've shot in the rain with this lens but not to the point where I was completely soaked through and also I've never dropped it. 
so I can't really tell you what it's like at bouncing off the floor or being dunked into the sea, unlike some of my other lenses. However, in, the experience, in my experience, it's worked 100%. I've never had any issues. I've never had any problems with the lens freezing up or the focus not working or anything like that. The body does scratch a little bit, especially if you're always throwing it in and out of the bag. I don't generally baby my equipment because I just don't have time for that. If I need to throw it in the bag to get another lens, I will do it and it will just rub against other lenses. I know some people have just had a heart attack, but it'll be okay. However, in general, this lens is very good. Uh, the glass is completely scratch free, even though I don't use any protective filters and I've got no complaints about it. And that's after a year of traveling with this lens pretty much full time. Now, although this lens is half the weight and size of the 50 to 140, it's still a big and heavy lens, especially if you compare it to like the F2 primes or even the F1.4 primes, it's quite hefty. On an X-H2, it feels at home. It's a nice balance. On an X-T5, it is pushing towards a bit of that front heavy feel. However, it's easily doable. However, if you have an X-T4, if you have X-T30 or some of the older, smaller Fuji cameras, I wouldn't recommend it because it'll be very front heavy. Your wrist will hurt after a while. So from that point, it is suitable for bigger cameras. Now, if it isn't a bigger camera, it does balance well. The aperture ring is very nice. It clicks easily. And generally speaking, it's a very premium feeling product and I love using it. If you're finding this video useful and wish to support the channel, then one of the best ways to do so is to check out my Fujifilm camera guides. I only make guides for cameras I've personally purchased and owned for at least six months. This ensures that any advice I give is based on the real world experience. These guides are designed to save you time and remove a lot of the trial and error that comes with setting up new cameras. They cover the main features that most people will use and will show you how to set up your camera for efficiency, ease of use, and to get the best results. If you've just purchased a Fuji or want to learn more about your current camera, these guides will definitely help. For more information, see the links in the description and thank you for your support. Now this is where this lens really shines. The image quality out of this lens is insane. I made the video probably three years ago where I thought the Fuji 50 to 140 was incredibly sharp. This lens, in my opinion, is probably even sharper. The image is just spectacular, to the point where you will be softening the images, not sharpening them, because they will come out that sharp. And as I've mentioned earlier, when you crop in, having an image that's so sharp is actually beneficial because the quality then maintains. The color rendering is really good, but like with any Fuji lens, the color rendering is very good. There's not much else I can tell you. There's not much in the way of purple fringing. There's not much in the way of any weird artifacts. Even at F2, the image looks really, really nice. Even if you go to like F16, something like that, there's not too much diffraction or anything like that to talk about. Now, rather than talking more, let me just show you a bunch of images that I've taken with this lens and let you be the judge of the quality.
Because this lens comes with the linear motors, focusing is quiet and relatively quick. However, if you're focused on something that's right in front of you, and then you wanna change focus to something that's further away, especially at lower aperture numbers, it will take a bit more time because it's just a bigger motor that needs to move a longer distance. And of course, it will be a little bit slower compared to your 33mm lens or your 28mm or whatever. So it is there. However, once it's focused, the tracking is very good. It's silent, it's smooth. I have personally never had any autofocus issues. Any time that I can remember where I've missed focus is usually because either I used the wrong focus mode or because, let's say, I was focused on something right in front of me at f2 and then I wanted to change focus to something further away very quickly and I just didn't have the time to do so. That's the only time. Other than that, both for photo and for video, I can't say I've experienced any issues. To summarize, I do think this is an incredible lens and it will remain a staple part of my travel photography, street photography kit. However, this lens, in my opinion, is a luxury, it's not a must-have. And the reason for that is because of the price, it's not cheap at all. Luckily, I managed to get a good deal on it in terms of, I think it was like 10% off, plus a voucher I had for the camera store that I bought it from, but a full retail price is incredibly expensive. And a 50 to 200 for most people, will be a perfect telephoto travel lens. As a matter of fact, it'll be more useful because it covers a wider focal length, but focal range, sorry, but obviously you're losing a lot of features like the image quality, the focus, the weather ceiling, etc. If you love telephoto lenses, if you love shooting at longer lenses and you see yourself using it quite a lot, it is a good investment in my opinion. However, if it's something just in case, then I honestly wouldn't spend, what, eight, nine hundred pounds for something to have just in case. I hope that makes sense. All right, I hope you found this video useful. Now, I will do a part two to this where I go out and actually shoot with this lens and show you the behind the scenes and my thought process. That, however, will probably be in Tokyo or Osaka, depends on timing and the weather. But for now, I wanna thank you for watching the video. If you have any comments, suggestions, your own opinions, please leave them down in the comments. And for now, that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. We will soon make a stop at Kawachi Kosaka. Station number A8. The doors on the left side will open.